Hi friends. I just finished filming a get ready with me. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will leave that up here. I have no idea what that video is like, but I hope you enjoyed it. Today, we're gonna talk about something completely different, which is the contents of this box right here. We're gonna do an empties video, kids, and there's lots to unpack. So if you wanna hear about all of my beauty garbage, then keep on watching. I, for one, don't even remember half the stuff that's in here. So this will be as exciting for you as it is for me. Let's get started. This box is actually quite heavy. I like to accumulate a lot so that we can talk about a lot. It takes a while for someone like me, who is a very small creator who doesn't get any PR, to accumulate beauty trash. In fact, some of this trash is expired makeup that I didn't finish because that happens too. And when that happens, you have to throw it out. For some reason, I love these kinds of videos. I'm always curious to know what products people finish an entire thing of. I'm also curious to know what products people are throwing away just because they don't like it or, I don't know, all of that stuff really interests me so we're gonna do that today. Sorry for the hair, it's just, it is what it is. I'm trying desperately not to use as many heat tools on it as humanly possible between washes and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So we're just gonna start at the top. There's lots to go through here. It's a lot of skincare. I go through more skincare than I do makeup, but let's get started. First off, micellar water. I go through one of these like a month. I use a lot of it. I love it. I can take off my makeup and it won't make me break out. It helps me reduce waste in the bathroom. I use one of those erase your face cloths and one of these and it works a treat. I've tried both the sensitive skin formulas. This is the normal sensitive skin and this is the dry sensitive skin. I don't really see much of a difference. It just works. Not all my cellar waters are created equal. This one in particular, this was gifted to me by a friend who was looking to get rid of a bunch of stuff. This is one of them and now I understand why. This is the Pacifica Natural Beauty Cactus Water. I hated this. It made my skin burn. And it's got a real strong smell. On the label, it all checks out. Vegan, cruelty-free, good for all skin types. And it's formulated, you know, without all the parabens and phthalates and all that stuff. But I'm just warning you that this stuff hurts like hell. The Garnier Skin Active one is the best at the drugstore. I will never stray from this one again. So we have a couple of Mario Badescu bottles. One is the facial spray with aloe, herbs, and rose water. I go through a ton of this stuff because I use it as setting spray. It's not technically a setting spray. It doesn't have like a setting ingredient in it. However, it does take down all of that powderiness. It melts all of the products together, gives you a skin-like finish. I've talked about this before. It does work as a setting spray. It, it keeps my makeup on all day. Sometimes I wear makeup for like 12 hours a day and it stays in place. I said this before a couple times, however, that the mister is terrible. So swap it out for another mister if you have one lying around. I just keep reusing this old all-nighter bottle that I have and it works perfect. So the other one that I just finally got through is the facial spray with aloe chamomile meal and lavender. I just use this as kind of a extra step in my skincare routine for a little while. I felt like the lavender and the chamomile would be good for calming my skin. However, I didn't really see it do anything. It was, it was nice. It felt good. If you want something that's really refreshing and calming to spray yourself down with when you're having a panic attack, it works great for that and a hell of a lot cheaper than some sage products. Just throwing that out there. So I'm always on the lookout for better skincare for me personally. I have terrible skin Skin, and I'm constantly fighting hormonal breakouts and sensitivities and flakiness and oiliness at the same time. It's awful. I'm constantly looking for the right balance of products. So I've been through a couple of bottles of this Mabel and Meg Clarity Blemish Control Cleanser. It was okay. I think it probably worked as a cleanser. It wasn't irritating. I don't know if it actually did anything to help control my blemishes. It could be a number of things working against me. However, I just don't feel like this did what it says it does. The other thing is, is that it is way too expensive to not give you results. Actually, I'm going to show you what I have been using as a cleanser currently. By the way, it is freezing in my basement suite today because the upstairs neighbors control the freaking heat. They are clearly fine with the temperature. It's cold enough that my hands are going numb. So also I'm having a chip break because I'm hungry. The facial cleanser that I'm currently using is the Good Molecules Clarifying Cleanse Bar, which has been awesome, actually. I do feel like my acne, especially on my cheeks and around my mouth, has abated. I could buy a pack of three of these bars for a fraction of the price of one bottle of the Mabel and Meg cleanser. The only thing I wish they didn't do was package all of these bars individually into plastic. I feel like this could be a really good low waste option. And if you just had them in the cardboard, that would be ideal. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm really liking this. Good Molecules really is kind of killing it right now. What else? Yes, went through a bottle 
bottle of Pixie Glow Tonic has been a favorite of mine forever. I'm kind of thinking I might actually switch back to that. I know I was just talking about how much I liked Good Molecules, but I don't think the niacinamide toner is helping me in any way. My nose is just trash right now, which is really frustrating. I think I kind of miss the glycolic acid. I miss the gentle exfoliant. Ooh, some moisturizers. I've been a huge fan of the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream, but the Coco Cabana Cream piqued my interest because it was formulated for instant hydration, lasting moisture. It's supposed to absorb into the skin and really work magic. Plus it didn't have that pesky glitter in the formula that I don't really like about the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream. It has a lovely smell. It's a bit overpowering. It's delicious. It kind of smells like cookie dough in a weird way, but the texture is really strange. It kind of leaves you with this film. It feels great on your body, but when you have the residual on your hands, it just kind of feels yucky. So I don't know if I would go back to this, but this did work in the sense that it was really moisturizing. I'm still on the Neutrogena Hydra Boost train. This has been my moisturizer for a while. Mm. It just has this really refreshing smell. It has that nice gel consistency that doesn't leave you feeling sticky or oily. It just melts into the skin and leaves you feeling fresh and hydrated and clean. I love this stuff. Oh God, another micellar water. So this one I picked up because I ran out of the Garnier one and I'd never tried a higher end micellar water. So I was really curious to see if there was any difference. So I asked for a recommendation at Sephora and they pointed me in the direction of the Caudalie micellar cleansing water Water with the grape water. And I tried the grape water before and really liked it. So I thought, well, you know, let's see if this is groundbreaking or mind blowing in any sort of way. Spoiler alert, it's not. The Garnier one works just as good. Let's rip through a few more of these skincare items. Oh, this is the Vichy Mineral 89 Eyes. This is the eye serum that was gifted to me by Influencer. I really liked it. I used the whole bottle. It went a long way. My under eyes did actually feel very pampered, very moisturized. I think I might actually pick up a bottle again because my under eyes have been looking a real creepy lately. So many eye serums have caffeine in them, stuff to brighten, stuff to tighten. I'm really not about that. I think those things are just a recipe for irritation. So it was refreshing to use an eye serum that had none of that stuff, but still kept me hydrated and smooth. Went through one of these. I go back to this one every single time. It is the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Kiss Lip Butter. Still one of my favorite lip balms on the entire planet Earth. It's the one I always go back to. It's the one I I always repurchase. I've tried so many different lip balms and I still get to find the one that is my holy grail, my ride or die, but this comes close. It's just not perfect. The other downside to the Sol de Janeiro one is that you go through a tube like that. Another lip balm I used up entirely was the Fresh Sugar Coconut Hydrating Lip Balm. And you can see I scraped out that entire container. I love a coconut smell, so I loved applying this stuff. However, I felt that it didn't last very long and I was constantly having to reapply. Also, I really don't like using my fingers to apply lip balm. Ooh, I tried the Drunk Elephant number nine jelly cleanser. It's got glycerin, cantaloupe. It's fine. It's fine. Didn't break me out, so. Empty tube of NYX on the rise. I just repurchased my third one. Still in love with it. I think it's still one of the better mascaras at the drugstore. The only downside is that once you get to the tail end of it, it starts getting really flaky. So just keep that in mind and maybe use it a little faster. If you're using a mascara, every day, then it shouldn't be a problem. The Catrice Liquid Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. I really like this stuff. Has a really strong scent to it. So that kind of put me off, but I did like it. This one was a bit too bright for me. Also, I went through the tube really fast. It did not last very long. That usually deters me from buying a second one for some reason. I don't know. I, I did the same thing with the Revolution one, that concealer, which was really great, but it dried out so fast. I've gone through maybe like six or seven of these. This is the NYX Epic Ink Liner. I have sung this liner's praises in recent videos, so I won't stay here for long, but it's the best liquid liner at the drugstore. If you know of any better, then let me know. But for now, I don't see the point of using any other eyeliner at the drugstore or any other eyeliner that's high end if I can get the same quality for half the price. It is very apparent how much I love this eyeliner. Ooh, this product is lovely. It's the Tarte Lip Quencher. This one is in the shade Buff and I scraped this thing out as much as I could before I had to finally let it go. It has a minty smell. It's just a tinted lip balm that's really glidey and feels very, very hydrating. As much as I love 
love, love this formula. I just can't justify the price tag. There are so many tinted lip balms out there and some of them are really cost effective. The ColourPop Just a Tint Lip Crayon being one of them. But if you're looking for a nice little present for yourself, something to splurge on, I highly recommend it. This is the Duo Brush On Adhesive with Vitamins. Now I know definitively out of all of the Duo Lash Adhesives, this is the only one you should be buying. I am throwing out an entirely full tube of this shit. This is such garbage that I think it's criminal of them to actually produce and sell this. Doesn't work as a lash glue. It fails the first test. Currently, I'm working through the dark brush on adhesive. This is the only downside to this glue is that you can't really make a mistake because it uh, doesn't dry down clear. We're ripping through this, guys. This is the Color Sensational Shaping Lip Liner in Almond Rose. It is the best nude lip liner for me. I'm a huge fan of the Color Sensational formula. I have a bunch of them now and I pretty much love all of them, but Almond Rose is my perfect nude your lips but better lip liner i will continue to repurchase this over and over again this hasn't changed i think this is in the last empties video i did this is the precisely my brow pencil from benefit this is in the shade four it is still my favorite brow pencil i have yet to find one that rivals it and i've tried a bunch it's the perfect consistency and it's got a great spoolie on the back end of it i had someone recommend the brow blade to me by urban decay and i did like it however the formula and consistency of the pencil side was just a bit too thick for me. I couldn't get that really defined edge that I can get with the Precisely My Brow Pencil. However, if the Precisely My Brow Pencil had a brow marker on the other end of it, I think it would be kind of perfect. Oh yeah, I did go through all of this. There's like a tiny bit left in it, but I went through an entire jar of the Fenty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder in the shade Lavender. I love this powder. It's not super overpowering. The lavender one itself smells a lot like Rich Baby, so if you don't like that smell, stay far, far away, but the formula is great. It sets the face without looking too cakey or powdery. Lavender was a bit too pale for me. Currently, I use the shade Butter and the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer. I scraped this tube dry. The doe foot has nary a speck of product on it. I loved this concealer. It's such a great luminous formula that doesn't dry down super fast. You can work with it and play around with it for a while because it doesn't really set. I think I might repurchase this just because of how good my under eyes looked. Most concealers really emphasize my texture and this is not one of them. Based on that alone and the price, I would definitely repurchase this one. Only problem is can't get it in a brick and mortar store in Canada yet. Now we're getting down to things I am purging and decluttering and also getting rid of because the formulas kind of went off. This is the NYX Wonder Stick. I used to use this before I really knew anything about highlighting and contouring. It's just taking up space and it's an inferior product. I never use the highlighting side anyway because I feel like if you're gonna highlight your skin, just use a concealer. It's a very emollient texture, but it just kind of left me feeling like a total grease ball. I am finally saying goodbye to my Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Stick in the shade Blaze. Let's see how much product I truly have left. Holy shit. Like it's been in my collection for a long time and I was not using it sparingly. So that's a shit ton of product. Product. Unfortunately, it has gone bad. It started to smell like crayons and started to break up when I was trying to apply it on my skin. Ugh, yeah, no, it's just gone bad. It's expired. So I have to I have to say goodbye to half this tube of product that I really liked, which is too bad. I'm saying goodbye to both of these primers. I'm pretty sure both of these tubes are pretty much full. However, I just can't look at them anymore. Like I can't just keep opening my drawers and staring at this poor professional that I hate and I'm not going to use. This is one of the very first primers I ever purchased based on a recommendation from a Sephora employee. It's the Lancome La Base Pro Pore Eraser. It's not good. It never really worked and I'm just gonna let it go even though it was really expensive. <laughs> I have a tiny little stub of a lip pencil that I loved for a very long time. This is the Pro Longwear Lip Pencil from MAC. This is the shade Nice and Spicy. It's a really great nude lip liner. It started to dry out a little bit at the end so I'm just saying goodbye to it but I did use it pretty much down to the quick. I'm saying goodbye to a hula bronzer. It was clearly well loved. You can tell I panned it pretty hard. Generally steering away from matte bronzers these days and it's kind of a shame I have a brand new one that I had bought 
in case I ran out and then kind of came to the realization later on that I didn't actually like the product as much as I thought I did. So now I just have a full one that's just sort of sitting in my drawer. It just looks too orange, it's too dry. Um, this is a really hard one to say goodbye to because of how much I loved this product and how much I love the formula of this product. It's the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek. These are two of the first highlighters I ever bought. I loved them with everything I had. It got a lot of love. This one I almost hit pan on. It is beautiful. Like I still adore, stole the show. I think it's this beautiful creamy highlight. They're just getting a little long in the tooth. They're a bit dry. They're a bit crumbly. They're not performing as well as they once did. And that's fine because they're old. You can tell that they're kind of still working. It's just the consistency has gone a bit off. Like they started to get a little gummy. So as much as I loved them and continue to love them, they have to go. It's, it's weirdly emotional to part ways with makeup you have an attachment to based on a time in your life. I'm gonna hold on to one of them from the same era. This is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek and Smoke and Whistles. I'm gonna hang on to this one because it has held up a little bit better than the other two. Plus it is that more pinky, silvery color that I have not been able to dupe out yet. It's just such a special, special color and I'm not ready to part ways with it yet. It is just so beautiful. So I'm gonna hang on to that one for a little bit longer. But yes, this is a PSA to use your products while you still can, because they do go bad. That's it. That was a lot easier than the last video I filmed. <laughs> I hope you found this video entertaining in some sort of way. It's actually kind of really nice to be reminded of the products that I went through that I actually really enjoyed. There's some things in here that I rediscovered that I will definitely repurchase again. Also, do not keep using expired makeup. They are not the products that they once were. You to be honest with yourself. You can get another one. If you like it so much, you can get another one. Unless it was limited edition, in which case that fucking sucks. I hate limited edition, thanks. What's the point of limited? Okay, no, I'm not gonna go into that rant. So that, friends, was my beauty trash and I hope you enjoyed going through it with me. It's such a weird concept, but it is oddly satisfying. I don't wanna go on, let's just wrap this up. Here are the many ways you can help out my channel. Give this video a thumbs up, comment down below what you thought of the things, subscribe to my channel, follow me on other social media, I will leave those right there. And come visit me on Patreon, the link is down below. That is it for me, I hope you enjoyed this empties video. All right, folks, please be kind and be generous and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye.